Hi everyone and thank you for watching today. As many of you know, one of my favourite streaming devices is the Amazon 4K Fire Stick. However, today I'm going to take an in-depth look into the most powerful of all the Amazon streaming devices, their Fire TV Cube, to see if it's worth it for the extra cost. If you want to find out some more and take a detailed look at the Fire TV Cube with me, then let's go and take a look. You can use the clickable sections below to skip ahead to any specific part in this video. If you're looking for a new VPN service, why don't you check out the links in the description below this video. Clicking on these links can not only give you a great discount off of your next VPN subscription, but clicking through these links also helps to support my channel. This is the Fire TV Cube second generation released in 2019 and is the most powerful streaming device that Amazon offers in their range. It offers the same streaming experience as other Amazon devices, but with a built-in microphone that allows the Cube to be used entirely hands-free through voice commands. This also gives the Cube the ability to control cable boxes, sound bars, TVs, and AV receivers. All of the streaming devices in my home are Amazon devices as I really like their ease of use with the Fire OS and in my opinion you do get a lot for the price. However there are some limitations with Amazon streaming products and these are reasons why some users choose to go with an Android device over an Amazon device and I will also discuss these limitations in this video. First, let's talk about the specs. The Fire TV Cube packs a lot of power into a small cube for the price. It has a hexa-core processor that combines a quad-core running at up to 2.2 GHz and a dual-core running at up to 1.9 GHz. You've got 2 GB of DDR4 RAM, 16 GB of internal storage, dual-band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, 4K Ultra HD and HDR, Dolby Atmos, Far Field Voice Control, and it's running the latest version, Fire OS version 7. For a full list of specifications, check out the links in the description below. Now in comparison, the newest Fire Sticks from Amazon have a slightly slower processor and half the amount of RAM with just one gigabyte. The older 4K Fire Stick has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and runs an older Fire OS version 6. So it will be interesting to see how they all compare later on in benchmarking tests. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box and a closer look at the device itself. Inside the box you have the Fire TV Cube. optional Ethernet adapter, optional IR extender cable, the power supply, some quick start guides, and of course the Amazon remote control. And you do get two Amazon AAA batteries with it as well. The Amazon Ethernet adapter is limited to a maximum speed of up to 100 megabits per second, so that may be an issue for some people. However, 100 megabits per second is more than adequate for streaming. The cube itself is quite heavy, weighing 465 grams, especially when compared to a fire stick, which is around 56 grams. However, the cube does pack in a lot more tech. The cube is black with a gloss finish all over, apart from the top, which has a matte finish. Now, I'm not too clean on the gloss edges as it really does show up dust and fingerprints, which is not good news if you'd like to keep your devices looking shiny and new. On the front is the Amazon logo, and on the top you have volume up and down buttons, a button to turn the microphone on and off, and an action button. There are also eight tiny microphones that hear you from any direction and a light bar. 
Around the back, you have a HDMI port and an IR port for the included IR extender and a micro USB port for external storage or for using the included Amazon Ethernet adapter. Underneath you have four rubber feet and the speaker. I really like the Amazon remote. It fits nicely in my hand and I don't have any trouble with any of the buttons. It connects via Bluetooth so you don't need to point the remote directly at the box. The remote is the second generation Alexa voice remote. There is a third gen Alexa voice remote that is being sold with the third generation Fire Stick but this new remote doesn't yet come with the cube. Although this is the most expensive streaming device from Amazon, you do not get a HDMI cable. But this does seem to be coming more typical for a streaming device as neither does a HDMI come with the Nvidia Shield. Another drawback is you can't easily add additional storage via a USB or micro SD slot like you can with some Android devices. You are forced to use an OTG cable or adapter, but there is some good news. Because the Fire Cube runs Fire OS 7, adding additional storage can be easily achieved directly through the settings menu. If you'd like to find out more about adding storage to any of your Fire TV devices, you can check out my playlist showing above me and in the description down below. Plugging in the Fire TV Cube is easy, just plug in the power and HDMI, then connect it to your TV. However, if you want to connect via Ethernet, you can connect the Ethernet adapter that's included in the box to the micro USB port. Connecting your Cube directly via Ethernet can help with a better and more stable internet connection. Once powered up and the remote is paired, it's easy to follow the guided setup instructions on screen to allow your cube to control other devices and install additional apps. Once all this is done, you will be at the home screen. Another thing that's really great about the cube, well all Fire TV devices in fact, is the most popular streaming services are supported in up to 4K Ultra HD at 60 frames per second where available. Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, HBO Max, Apple TV, Peacock, Disney Plus and more are all supported. Plus, the Cube has support for Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus content, as well as support for Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus. The first thing that I noticed with the Cube is navigating around is really fast, as well as installing and downloading apps, which was flawless as well. I have no issues whatsoever with working my way around it. The Fire Cube is running Fire OS, which is a fork of Android. You will find that not all apps that are on the Google Play Store are available. Amazon have a smaller number of apps in their App Store, however you can easily get around this by sideloading applications. Just one point to make regarding this though, not all apps are compatible with Fire TV devices, as they may require Google services and that is not supported by Fire OS or they may require the installation of a virtual mouse toggle to navigate. In speed tests, the Cube performs well, connected to my 5 GHz Wi-Fi and connecting via Ethernet. I had no issues getting the maximum speeds from my ISP and the connection via Ethernet and Wi-Fi was both stable. Do remember though that if you use the Amazon Ethernet adapter, your speeds will be limited to 100 megabits per second. There's no problem with Bluetooth connectivity. I could connect my 8-bit DO controller without any issues and playing a game was excellent with no lag or performance issues. Pairing additional Bluetooth devices such as headphones also had no issues. And with the 16 gigabytes of internal storage and the ability to easily expand storage, you can install lots of apps and games. 
In benchmarking tests using Geekbench 5, I'm going to compare the performance of the processor in the Fire TV Cube to the cheapest Amazon streaming device, the Fire Stick Lite, and the most popular Amazon streaming device, the 4K Fire Stick. Now, benchmarking measures performance with a points system, with more points meaning better performance. You can see that the Cube is more than two times as powerful in single core processing than the Light and 4K Fire Sticks. And in multi core processing, the Cube is nearly twice as powerful as the 4K Fire Stick and nearly four times as faster than the Fire TV Stick Light. I do have more hardware reviews you can check out by taking a look at my playlist showing above me and in the description below this video, which includes a full review of other Fire TV streaming products and Android devices too. The Amazon Fire TV Cube retails for $119.99 in the US or £109.99 in the UK. However, if you're looking to purchase one, Amazon often lower this price several times throughout the year. In this year's Amazon Prime Day, the Cube was reduced to just $79.99 in the US and £59.99 in the UK. I would definitely recommend waiting for one of these price drops as at these prices, the Fire Cube is an absolute steal in my opinion. Overall, I love the Fire TV Cube. I now have two in my home, both purchased at a lower price during the sales. Although they are more expensive than any other Amazon streaming device, I do think that if you get them when they're on sale, for the price, it's most definitely worth it and is one of the best streaming devices on the market right now. Not only does it have superior power, it also has double the storage of any other Amazon streaming device. The far field voice control comes in handy and the ability to control other devices within my home is an extra bonus. With it being so powerful, I will be using it for years to come. If you have a Fire TV Cube, drop me a comment below this video with your thoughts on it. If you haven't got yourself one yet and you are interested in taking a look at it for yourself, you can find links in the description below this video. And going through these links also helps to support my channel. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And subscribe to my channel, making sure that you turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of my latest releases.